What do ethics mean in peace operations? Ethics is the highest standard of conduct and behavior and the universal values, uh, especially human rights. I would define it as a moral duty. I think it's, 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 it's also defined it as uh, professionalism. It's something that uh, you do also when no one is seeing. It's something about, for sure, something about the code of conduct and following it and also uh, understanding and progressing the values of, of your organization. You have to make sound uh, judgments. You have, to, you have to do decisions that uh, are aim for the good. So they are decisions that you can live with. Next time when you look at the mirror after two years, five years, whatever, you have to be able to say that uh, I did my best and uh, that's how I see the ethics in the, in the mission. So. Ethics in peace operation means to me following my values, equality, honesty and truth in decision-making process. The current human population is over 7 billion, located in more than 190 countries. They all house their individual moral codes, beliefs, social norms, values and taboos, forming the ethical rules. How have we formed our current understanding on what is right and what shall not be accepted? How can we ensure that we do more good than harm when deployed to protect those in need when our experiences and perceptions may differ fundamentally from one another? The Charter of the United Nations was signed in June 1945 by 50 nations. The emphasis was on preventing conflicts and protecting civilians from the horrors of war. The United Nations gave the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948, which was drafted by representatives with different legal and cultural backgrounds from all regions of the world. The Declaration was a historical achievement which laid the basis for fundamental human rights to be universally protected by all the people and all nations. This joint achievement was soon put to the test when the first UN military observer mission was deployed to respond to the Arab-Israeli war in 1948. The next challenge was the Suez crisis in 1956 to which the UN responded by sending armed peacekeepers. The ethics of peacekeeping does not only rely on the Declaration of Human Rights and the current international law, but the activities of each mission are also directed by its mandate. Every operation has its unique mandate defining the key characteristics and objectives. Nowadays we look to individual soldier, not the whole group, but uh, ethics is much more personal perspectives, uh, personal values and so on, not the values of the armed forces or the society. Based on the legal documents, the United Nations has created a uniform code of conduct for those serving under its mandates. However, we must understand that professional and individual ethical codes direct each peacekeeper's decision-making. Behind every ethical decision stands experience, education, training and cultural background. But what happens when the conditions change instantly? Of course, the worst scenario is that the people are, are start to operate like uh, they sort of go out of what they're supposed to do. If they don't think they start to do wrong things. In the worst scenario, of course, it can even include war crimes or, or, or similar, which we have, I think, I believe, some evidence from, uh, from Africa, when the UN troops were not really like behaving as, as they were supposed to behave. So that's, of course, the worst scenario. There has been some operation where people have actually um, done differently when they are in a mission and when they go on, um, on free time, they, they behave completely opposite. In these moments, the outcomes will be determined by decisions that the individuals make. And the only way to become assured of the best outcome is to train them to meet the challenges in the field. We have developed legal framework, normative framework, policies, guidelines, operational concepts for the protection of the civilians. But in fact, who takes a key decision when faced with the situation on the ground is the person who is the on-scene commander. And they have to make an informed decision based on a good judgment. To enable them to be in a position to make a right decision in a right moment, we have to provide effective and practical training for all the military, civilian and police peacekeepers.
national training institutions provide training for the men and women sent out to the missions. To unify the national training, we need international cooperation to form the common outline and to adopt uniform models of action. This also means unifying our ethical codes and understanding to meet the upcoming challenges. Education and training, if they provide and they teach uh, uh, students about the legal framework, rules and regulations, how to uh, operate in the peacekeeping environment, uh, which is essential, but this is not sufficient because uh, it is very important to incorporate examples from the practical life, from, uh, from the practice, because in real life we are faced with the situation where you have to be creative and flexible acting within the general legal framework, but focusing on implementing your mandate. That is why we are very often faced with ethical dilemmas in practice, and we know how to address this situation, because decisions will be taken in the field at the operational level. And now I think we are going back to the basics and really understanding uh, what are the ethics, why we are doing the work, what, what it is supposed to mean, how you feel it by yourself, uh, do you understand that this is, is, this is the value that you can uh, take forward? And also, especially, I think the most important thing is that you do not harm. You should be always thinking what you are doing and uh, what are the consequences of your actions. So, in my opinion, there should be even more ethics training. We should have more uh, gender and cultural awareness training. For example, practical examples how to behave and act in peacekeeping operations. We cannot predict every situation, but we can be prepared. How would you choose to act when the unexpected happens?